Uh, thank you, Phil. Um, you know, when Man Nelson Mandela was in prison in 1985, and he had been moved off Robben Island, and he occupied one floor in a prison at Paulsmore outside Cape Town. And his four closest friends and companions in the ANC uh, occupied a second floor. Am I talking to? to, to Speak into the mic, Harry, tell everyone else. <laughs> <laughs> Is this better? Yeah. Oh, yes. He told me to keep away from it. And, and his four closest companions were on a floor below. They also had been released from Robben Island. And uh, Mandela recounts in his uh, autobiography of how he had come to the conclusion at that point that violence was not going to work to solve the problem in South Africa. Now, normally, given the way the ANC works, no decision could be made by him alone. He would have to refer that to his companions on the second floor, and they would have to debate it, and they would have to reach a consensus about it. And he knew that if he did that, that they would say, no, we can't do it, because we have to refer this matter to a full hearing somehow of the ANC Executive Committee, which was in Lusaka, about 1,500 miles away. And since he knew that the answer was going to be no, he decided that he would just go ahead and do it himself. And when he did break the news to his uh, companions, um, they were disturbed that he hadn't followed the proper procedures laid down by the organization. I'm saying that because today, as I said at lunch, I was most moved by how much you're able to say about what you already have done together. And in the case of Mitrovica, so moved by they being able to say what they were going to do together when they came went back. And so moved that they said that in the presence of senior politicians from, quote unquote, both sides of the divide. And we talked about leadership. And leadership meaning that you take the risk to fail, as Mandela did. Because Mandela used that opportunity in 1985 to move ahead on his own to open talks with the government, the apartheid-hated government. He did it without the knowledge and consent of his party. He risked not only failure, but expulsion from his own party, or worse, being called a sellout. But he did it because he broke the mold, risked failure, stepped outside the box. And I feel all of you here from the cities that it's been my privilege to visit have that capacity to move outside the boxes. And if you move outside the boxes together, more or less holding each other's hands, that you can do things collectively that you may not be capable of doing individually. And I hope tonight you think about that as we enter the last day. We came here not to have a conference and just exchange ideas 
and go home and say, that's one more conference. We came here to do something and to make that something work. That's what we came to do. And I believe that this is so close to being possible that in your deliberations tonight and the first part of tomorrow, we can achieve, we can achieve that and move forward together, creating a small little thing that gets away from the big institutions and the multilateral and the governments and the UN and the EU and all those other organizations that are five or six digits in their, in their names. <laughs> and work closely together on issues of common interest. You know, I'm relentless. I never let go. I've <laughs> known that since last uh, November. No kidding. <laughs> that's my boss. <laughs> but with that, I want to thank uh, Phil and uh, particularly Joe, Joe Pickerel, who has been uh, just a constant supporter in all our endeavors from not just Northern Ireland, but in Iraq and, and, and in this. And, um, you know, you've been enormous and, and bountiful help to us. And to the president of my university, and to my dean, and to Pat and Nancy in particular, and Winnie, is out there, and Jeffrey, our small little team that took this on and decided there was only one end. That end will come tomorrow. <laughs> if the end doesn't come, I of course would cancel all the tickets home. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just letting you know that now. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and, and if I have left anyone out, uh, I apologize. But everyone has been gracious and wonderful and warm and hardworking and all our volunteers have not just been volunteers uh, some of them have taken over the asylum if it was so, <laughs> uh, so thank you ever so much and enjoy the rest of your evening and we look forward to completing our business tomorrow on a very high tone thank you